welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And it's another windy day on the Scottish islands. And yeah, it's a lovely day. The sun is shining and I'm here at the north end of the Isle of Arran. And this is the small town called Lohranza, which actually has a castle from about 1200 and the tower is from about 1500. So it gives you a bit of a, a time frame of how important actually the islands were back in the days. But today it's not about the islands and all of that, but it's about the Isle of Aran single malt from the distillery of Lochranza. So let's get to it and find out how the whiskey is made. The story of the Lochranza distillery begins in 1995 with a name called Harold Curry. He was an ex Shivers Brothers um, manager who who did his passion project. He was old and he uh, uh, got into kind of retirement, but he said, I want to build a distillery. And he did here on the Isle of Arran in 95. So um, what he did is he built these buildings. And if you look at it, they have pagoda roofs on them. But at 95, so they never had malting floors. There, there was actually no reason to building these pagoda roofs in the doik ventilator style. But they actually did it because they said, yeah, we want to be recognized as a, as a Scotch distillery. And every Scotch distillery has a pagoda roof, so we need pagoda roofs as well. And in the end, they actually, the people on the production floor say, you can actually adjust them very well as ventilators, so you have good ventilation on the production floor. So they're not really without any reason there. So yeah, that's how the pagoda roofs got up there. In 1997, the visitor center got opened and actually it got opened by Queen Elizabeth herself. As a present, she got two uh, casks of whiskey for that. And they are now in possession of uh, her two sons. And yeah, the, the casks are still on site. And then in 1998, the first three year old whiskey was released and the cask was actually opened by Ewan McGregor and yeah, he still has a cask in there. It went upwards from there. So it was really running really well. And in 2017, they actually expanded the distillery. These are the original stills from 1995. They got replaced. They got two more stills. So in total, they have now four stills. And yeah, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about the history of the stills. Some people say, yeah, they are of the old, um, Shivers Brothers style. Others say no, they are more like uh, Macallan influence because um, Mr. Curry was his favorite drum was Macallan. And yeah, there are still rumors and it's not quite clear why they are this shape. But Forsyth built the stills. They probably still had the plans. Richard still had the plans from uh, his father, Richard. And they built exactly the same stills for new ones in there. So the style is really really the same and in 2019 the distillery actually did a bit of rebranding new labels new style kept a lot the same and the discussion was because they had a new distillery the iron distillers the company had a new distillery on the south of the island lag i had a video two weeks earlier of that and they actually uh, thought about okay how, how are we gonna distinguish that because Aaron single malt lag is also from Aaron. So they actually put the distillery name now on the bottle. So the emph emphasis is now more on Lochranza distillery. It's still the Aaron single malt, but Lochranza distillery is on there as well. So yeah, let's take a little bit of a, a walk because we can actually see where the water comes from. The distillery is right next to a creek. The creek is called Isenbirich and it's being fed by Loch Nadavi, which is a, a small loch uphill and that has an underground source of water as well as uh, another creek feeding it. So they are pretty independent from rainfall. Even during dry season, they have enough water to feed the distillery. And the water is actually perfect for whiskey making. No unwanted minerals in it. So they don't really have to filter anything except for like grass bits. Uh, but they're not treating anything. They're just pumping it straight from Isenbirich into the distillery. And yeah, let's go go along with that pump and find out how the whiskey is actually made. Behind me is a beautiful small mash tun. 
And it is a yeah, pretty normal mash tun, which is the start of the really the distilling process where you take hot water and you wash out the starch from the barley, malt, grist, and then you have enzymes splitting up the starch into sugars, which is then perfect for the fermentation. Interesting fact that the distillery did not start off with a mill. So they actually bought grist instead of malted barley, and it was pre-milled for their production. In the years around 2000, they actually got a mill so they can switch to normal malted barley. They have a lot of computers around here, checking a lot of facts, but still they also do rely on old traditional methods as this underback here, where you can smell is everything all right and you can look if it's dark enough. Dark enough tells you that you get a clear ward. If you have bits in there and it's brighter, then you go more of a cloudy ward. Here you want a clear ward to get more of a fruity character rather than a grassy character. And this is, this is what you want here. You want a fruity character. And with this wort, we go up to the fermentation. Here we have six wash bags. They actually had an expansion back in the days when they moved from two stills to four stills. They moved from four wash bags to six wash bags. And the current expansion that is going on on the other side of the building is adding even more wash bags. And that's to, for them to yeah, improve their their production capacity because yeah they need more wash bags because what they want to have is a very fruity character how do they do that they have a clear wort 75 hours of duration of fermentation duration and they have um, a very fruity yeast so this is a combination that gives you a lot of fruity character and the 75 hours that is really not negotiable because you have lactic bacteria that really that produce these uh, fruity easters that are responsible for the taste and they really need the duration of 75 hours. Currently they're still working on a five, sh a five day shift and so they have some long and some shorter um, fermentation duration but that is going to change in the future when they build their new tun room. They are working with a seven day shift so they're gonna have a constant fermentation duration, which is perfect for quality and consistency. And yeah, let's have a look at this fruity orchard wash, how that is now transformed into new make spirit. As I said, the distillery used to have two stills. Back in the days when Horst visited the distillery, he actually saw the two stills. They used to be in between the wash stills and in between the spirit stills, and there was a a charger or a low wines tank in the end. Now they all had to move that downstairs. Now they have a nice line of four stills right next to each other. It's beautiful. So what they want to have is really a very fruity character. How do you do that? And the answer is you have a very long neck and they have it on the spirit still as well as the wash still. Spirit still is much more important. What they also told me what is very important for them is to keep the grassy out. And how they do that is by cooling their low wines very low. So they actually cool it down to 20 degrees Celsius and probably the condensers are a bit bigger than you use, usually have and for that kind of still. And that means they come down to 20%. I'm not quite sure how, why that is actually keeping the grassy out and enhancing the fruitiness, but uh, they say that's the way they do it and that's, yeah, that's the right way to make the Lochranza spirit. Also, they do the same thing as the, at the spirit still and that is also very important. Usually I taste them at 68 or 70 around there. Today I'm trying it at 20 because they do that here at the distillery and that is, that is really, really fresh fruity. If if they would give me that in a blind tasting, I would definitely say that is some pear fruit schnapps. I don't know, but that is so fruity. Green apple, pears, that is massively in there. Mmm. Mmm. And 20% that is easy and so... Oh, you could sell that as a, as a fruit schnapps liqueur or something like that. That is, that is beautiful. 
So this is the, the distillation side of the production. And now let's go into the warehouses. This here is one of the old warehouses. It's the traditional style. It's dunnage, it's three stories high, and it's used mainly to store big casks and yeah, a bit of special casks because later they built racked warehouses and they have one racked warehouse that is specialized for vattings where you can put one kind of batch of casks in there that have been just been refilled with a vatting tank that is actually in the warehouse. So that is very practical. And then they have a very special whacked warehouse, which is a, a French style kind of warehouse that has um, a special kind of way how the casks lie there. And you can actually access every cask very good, very well, and you can taste them easily. So this is where the special casks lie, the single casks, Prince Harry and Prince William's casks. Uh, lies there as well as we, well as Ewan McGregor's and um, yeah the last one is the palletized warehouse which is for the younger casks they're standing up a bit more you lose a bit more but they are highly efficient so yeah this is the the warehouse situation at Lohanse and now let's have a bit of a try of their whiskey so this was it with the production and now we're going with a bit of a tasting and an interview with Stuart Bowman you're the distillery manager six years in the whiskey industry eight years in brewing and you studied this brewing and distilling yeah that's correct yeah, <laughs> so, so you're really into distilling and brewing <laughs> love it I've come from two very um very famous whiskey regions so i was originally born in kentucky oh. louisville lived over there until i was about seven or eight and then lived the rest of my life up in the highlands of scotland right um beside Kleinleash distillery Kleinleash okay. and Brora. so nice. yeah yeah Nice. So, yeah, thank you very much for having us here at the distillery. That oh, is just a lovely place. And thank you very much for giving us all the information and showing us around. That was uh, cool. a nice tour. And so you are, came from the brewing and now got into distilling. So mm. how similar is it? That's, yeah, there's a lot of similarities in there in terms mm -hmm. of the, you know, how we operate ourselves in, in breweries and in distilleries. Um, but I guess it's a little bit different because I come from a craft brewing background. Mm -hmm. So in in the brewery that I worked in, we did a lot of very strange beers. We used a lot of different hops, you know, very high alcohol, very low alcohol in some instances. So we did a lot of kind of chopping and changing and different recipes and stuff all over the place. Whereas in distilleries, what we're more focused on is the the nuance within the production process. So um, whiskey is an agricultural product mm -hmm. as the weather changes, the water changes, the malt changes with the season. So in order for us to hit our key, um, our key f focus and goal really at the distillery, which is the character of the whiskey and the quality of the, of, of the new make that we're producing, we need to be a lot more um, focused on the fine details. Whereas a lot of the time in brewing, especially craft brewing, you just kind of you're throwing stuff in there, doing some crazy experiments and stuff. So, but okay. it, yeah, very different. Okay, it is different. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, what are we having today? We are going to try, first of all, the Aaron 10 year old, mm -hmm. which is our main seller. It's about 40% of, mm -hmm. of our production and it is a lovely, very accessible, very drinkable dram. Mm. Slange oh. Slange. This is really fruity. A light fruity, that, that reminds me a bit of a Northern Highland style. Uh, yeah. Oh, that is just, that is intriguing to just, uh, yeah, drink me. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, it's so complex and I love, I love talking about the 10 year old yeah. because the, the, as I say, the character of the, the spirit that we produce is fruity. So you've got the apples and mm -hmm. the pears and the bananas and stuff, but you also have that kind of interlaced with the vanilla and the coconut from the mm -hmm. wood. We've got 20% sherry casks within that recipe. So we've also got mm -hmm. some of that kind of darker, more complex, heavy fruit flavors and wood aromas and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's one of those drams that every time you go back to it, you get something a little bit different from it. So it's a- uh, I like it, I like it. It's, it's yeah. a really nice entry malt. That's, that's exactly it. In terms of price point, in terms of like how, how we market ourselves, it is something that we like to make sure that we are accessible, that, you know, from mm. a price point, it's very accessible. And uh, yeah, wins a few awards, which is always good to see, <laughs> bit of, yeah, bit of validation. Um, but it's uh, yeah, a lovely smooth dram, very easy to drink. Mm. Yeah, it's launching. Cheers. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, that is pleasant. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. <laughs> um, but yet still, the the fruitiness is a bit different in, to the to the new make I had. Yeah. You do have a bit of that sherry influence. You do have, oh, but you still do have a lot of orchard fruit, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm. And for me, it's very pleasant, fruity. Because just today, I just had lag, lag, lag. Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just. Yeah, and, and you know they're they're very different. They do they do that kind of sweet peat thing. So yeah. it is it is very cool. But the what I really love about all of the Aran drams, regardless of its you know one of our core mm-hmm. line, one of our older expressions like you know eighteen twenty one twenty five, mm-hmm. um, is there's a huge amount of complexity to it. They're not one dimensional whiskies. There's mm-hmm. a huge amount of stuff going on. Yeah, and I think that's that's evident as we go through the core range. Mm-hmm. Flows around your mouth nicely. Very smooth, nice mm. mouthfeel, very oily. Mm. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just a wonderfully drinkable dram. Very easy and accessible. Mm-hmm. So what you didn't see much in the distillery video is that you have a bit of construction going on. So, so <laughs> yeah. what is that all about? So we are building an extension to our tun room at the moment. So mm-hmm. essentially a building that is on the uh, north side of our existing tun room to house four new wooden washbacks. So exactly the same as the washbacks that we have uh, in the existing distillery. And this will allow us to push up to the, uh, the capacity of the original design of the distillery when it was upgraded in 2016. Ah, okay. So we at the moment are a five day site. So we work through the week, we shut down on a Friday night and we start up on a Sunday night. So having the additional washback capacity allows us to work over the weekend. So Mm -hmm. doing essentially 20 mashes instead of 13 mashes a week. Mm -hmm. Um, But it does so without compromising on the fermentation times and therefore the quality of the whiskey. And that's paramount. Yeah, I think, yeah, the fermentation time is kind of your bottleneck up up till now. Yeah. Yeah. So um, h- how many liters are you going to then hopefully produce then per year? We, so we're doing at the moment, as I say, 13 mashes a week, which is about 600,000 liters a year. Uh, with the new washbacks, we should be able to go up to somewhere over a million liters, one point, maybe 1.1 million okay, liters. A so, million. Yeah. So it, it is quite a jump, um, but we've done an awful lot of work within the business in the past you know, kind of since I joined really about 15, 16 months ago, trying to model out the mashing and distillation times, trying to capture as much of the, the, the metrics that influence the quality of the whiskey mm. so that when we do move it to, move to seven days, we're not just jumping into the void. You know, mm. we're doing it in a measured approach and we know that we will be able to, well, we believe that we will be able to keep the whiskey absolutely the same mm-hmm. but you never know until you get there so that's the reason that we've captured yeah, all this information there's probably a little time where you have a fluctuation and you settle in at the, at the spot you want i think so yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. It might need a couple of tweaks but mm-hmm. we've got all the information we've got the baseline to have we've we've had our nms analyzed um looking at the kind of spectrum of compounds that influence the the aroma and the flavors within the whiskey so we know that if something starts to drift a little bit, we'll be able to figure out what that is and then reverse engineer it so that we can we can figure it out and make sure that we're making that classic Lachranza new make because that's what everybody knows and loves. Yeah, obviously <laughs> that, needs, that needs to stay. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, the next one is the uh, quarter cask and called yes. the Bothy, right? Called the Bothy, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I have actually had that before and I know what I'm getting into. <laughs> okay. It's... Uh, yeah, one hint it's got it's it's nice <laughs> it's so the, I, I guess one of the main differences um, apart from the fact it's a non-age statement from our 10 year old is it is cask strength so we're up mm-hmm. at 56.2% so we do have a little bit of water here if you want to temper it down um, mm-hmm. but it is again a very classic Aaron Dram apple mm-hmm. obviously you know doesn't have sherry casks in it it's purely so what, what we do with this is we take a six and seven year old um, whiskey that's been matured in bourbon casks and we vat that out into quarter casks, which are obviously mm-hmm. you know, half the size of an eight, of a American standard barrel, 100 liters. And then we leave that for about a year and allow the higher wood to liquid ratio really push the wood influence onto the whiskey. Just so give it a boost. Give it a big boost, absolutely. <laughs> but 
as a distiller, I always like to see the distillery character in there, and it still is evident. You've still got that kind of stewed apples, um, mm -hmm. quite a bit of quite a bit of banana, that fruity backbone there that works very well with the that wood influence. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's uh, it has a definitely a, a bourbon cast character to it for me. Yeah. And uh, nice. What I find is it has more of a piney, potentially herbal characteristic, which I think mm. maybe comes from the wood. But um, mm. lovely dram. Mm. Does the the ABV? Tend to vary, or does it stay the same? Is it a batch one? It's a batch one. So we, I mean, the, yeah, it's 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 cast strength. So we would vat that at the bottlers, and then mm -hmm. just take it down a little bit. So it's um yeah, it is slightly reduced in terms of ABV, but it's yeah, the water's a good addition as well because mm -hmm. it is it yeah, is well it is, up there. It's quite strong. It yeah, it's a it nice is cast strength, yeah. and that's what cast strength are made for. Yeah, you, you can enjoy them at the ABV that you want. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about the the blending process when you, when you take the 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 bourbon cask into other casks. Uh, how is that done here? Well, it's done um, when I took over this position in November 2021. Our production director James McTaggart, mm -hmm. um, who had previously been the distillery manager here and had worked at Bowmore previous to that, so a lot of experience within the industry. Um, we sat down and talked about essentially the recipes that he used to create all of the expressions. Mm -hmm. um, and they are, you know, they're relatively formulaic, so there is a formula behind them. Mm -hmm. But we need to be able to flex with the, what the whiskey actually smells and tastes like and also the stock that we have available. So for example, the 25 year old, which we'll come on to later on, um, that will change year on year because we only have a, a small parcel of those casks. Mm -hmm. um, and it means that we kind of, we need to bottle the best of that we can find within that age range. So a lot of it, like, and I don't have a huge amount of, of experience blending whiskey, nosing whiskey and stuff like that. More, my experience is more with the beer side of things, but a lot of things are very transferable in terms mm -hmm. of the skill sets. Um, and one of the main ones is being able to, it sounds really simplistic, but being able to tell good whiskey from bad whiskey <laughs> and good okay. beer from bad beer. And it's, okay. it, it is, and part of it is training, but part of it is instinctive. So um, it's, it's kind of, it, it was a bit of a leap of faith um, for me coming in and you know, doing the blending for Isle of Iron Distillers. Um, but it's, it's such a fun part of what I do because it means I have quite a bit of creativity. Um, and we looked at the blending lab earlier on, you know, there's, there's some samples set up there and it's really great to just step away from the day-to-day -day running of the distillery and be able to do something that I can really kind of put my focus and attention into. Great, great. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the next one is called the Bodega. Bodega. Sherry cask. That's the sherry cask. Heavy uh, hitter. Yeah, I, I do love that what you have with the, I'm quite sure what number was, the, the warehouse with the, with the French racks. I've never seen that before. Yeah, no, neither had I. It's, it, was, it was a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a surprise. So that was a French wine racking system that I guess by design allows the, the, the vineyards to get in and turn the casks. We, well, turning is, is the idea behind that. I, I think yeah. so. That's what I've been led to believe. Oh, okay. But I don't. Obviously, we don't do that in the distillation <laughs> industry because every time you turn a cask, you use a little, lose a little bit of whiskey, which you really don't want to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, but what it, as as Andy had said, what it does do is it allows us to get in there and sample from every cask and regauge every cask. So, if a customer has uh, has a requirement, we can get in and yeah, send them away a sample and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, I love the view when you when you walk down the aisles and you have a look and, and there were like tons of different sizes of cars and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> that was it, amazing. It's a really it's a really nice place and there's a lot of very good whiskey in there. So yeah, mm -hmm. hallowed ground. Yeah, it's it's really nice. So mm. the bodega is one of the big sherry casts finishes then. Yep. Uh, so again, cast strength, 55.8% mm. ABV. So um, very, uh, very, very high in ABV, but massively aromatic and everything mm. you would expect from a sherry finish release. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you've still got that backbone in there. You've still got those, the apples and the, you know, the orchard pears and everything like that from the new make spirit. But that is 
that is kind of almost hidden behind all of those big sherry notes. And the, the classic sherry notes, you know, your dark fruits and your mm -hmm. chocolate and raisins and stuff like that. Um, quite floral as well, actually. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. I was about to say that. I have a little bit of a, a rose in there. Yeah. Strangely enough. Well, yeah. Mm. It's, it has a little bit of a perfume note to it. Uh-huh. And... Mm. Well, in the in the flavor, nicely sweet, mild, but uh, very fruity also. Very fruity. I mm. find this one a little bit more balanced. Like some people, um, some people struggle a little bit with some of our releases because they are so sweet. Mm. Because there's so much, there's so much fruit um, esters in there, and there's so much, so much sweetness because of the tannins that we've got mm -hmm. from the from the sherry casks. I think it's a little bit more balanced. So mm -hmm. there's a little, a little bit, yeah, the sweetness is tempered a bit. Mm. So now that you say the the finish, yeah, is a bit more with tannins, oak, and a bit more of a hefty. Is that European oak? Do you, is is that uh, knowledge here? Is that European or is that um, just sherry something? I, th I think it's just sherry. Yeah, I mean it's mm -hmm. it's you know the the all the, the the red cherries and the dark fruits from the mm -hmm. from the sherry, but also. You know a lot of the influence of the spicy characters from the woods, your cinnamons, and oh, yeah. you know a little bit of clove and stuff like that as well, which mm -hmm. just adds to the complexity. But yeah, strangely, uh, that that the, the aftertaste is pretty spicy mm -hmm. for what I've had with uh, the ten and the quarter cast. So I, I yeah. do like it. As you said, balanced. You have a, a fruity sweetness start, and then you have a, like kind of a journey whiskey. Absolutely, a, yeah, a yeah. Flavor journey till the very, till the very very end. Yeah, absolutely. So I remember you. You've your the story started in 1995, mm -hmm. and so you're nearly 30 years old now. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a 30 year old release then <laughs> at some point? <laughs> we are certainly looking at some of the older expressions. I can't commit to anything at the moment um, because that that is reliant on you know stock that's available mm. in 2025 mm -hmm. uh, when we do turn 30 years old but yeah we are looking at older expressions of of the adam lot because it's the, the stuff that we've had so far is is beautiful very very nice whiskey mm -hmm. um what we have obviously as we move up the ages with everything is that mellowness really starts to come through mm -hmm. and that allows that kind of you've still got the complexity and you've still got everything in there that, that's making it a really really interesting dram um, but it is very it's very very relaxed and very silky i find in terms of mouthfeel and everything so yeah leave that one with us we'll, we'll, we'll work on that one <laughs> we'll see yeah. we'll see yeah we, we, when you have the hobby of whiskey you have to have patience absolutely yes that's the key, key ingredient <laughs> you have the warehouse and the warehouse is just sitting there and yeah Awaiting. That's it. <laughs> so speaking of old whiskies, huh? Then uh, twenty-five years. Yeah. That was like three years ago when you came out with that. Or we, yeah, we do, we do a twenty-five-year-old release every year, um, as well as an eighteen and a twenty-one. Mm -hmm. Very, very small, small volumes. Obviously. So only like four thousand eight hundred bottles or something like that, because we don't have a huge amount of the old stock left. Obviously, back in the day, uh, the production volumes were were a lot lower. Mm -hmm. So not quite yeah not quite as much of this out in the market but a wonderful dram Ooh, oh, that is, yeah what is that that smells like christmas and cake and oh that's it and that is very very round the other one it, you started off pretty fresh and mm. with a nice bourbon character cherry and a bit of spiciness yeah. and this one is just mature and round and that's velvety it. oh i love that mm. yeah it's it's nice that you have a kind of a young distillery. You don't have like 18, 20 and something, mm. but you still got twenty five year old. So I, I really love that. Yeah, it's it's really cool and it allows us to look at that older stock and have a bit of fun with it as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, the vast majority of the older stuff is in in sherry butts or sherry hoggies. Mm -hmm. So obviously, getting quite a lot of that, quite a lot of that color from it. Um, but just the, the the settling time, the you know the time as you say in the maturation to just allow it to mellow and just chill is just just yeah. puts a, a wonderful dram together. I mean to to imagine uh, this is twenty five years old, probably uh, what was what was the name Harold 
Harold, Harold Curry. Curry. Yeah. He probably looked over that. Oh, maybe not. I'm not. Sure. I'm sure. I'm sure he would have. And the and the um, <laughs> this is a bit of a piece of one of the previous. Well, the first distillery manager here, Gordon Mitchell. Uh-huh. Yeah, they would have. Uh, they would have been the ones that you know making this and dr- mm-hmm. driving the direction of the company and everything. So it's, yeah, it's great history in a glass there. Yeah, I love that Christmas cake reference as well. It's perfect. <laughs> Encapsulates just the whole oh, thing. Just, I love. I love. Uh, above eighteen. Eighteen is kind of like the best. For a whiskey, but uh, yeah. twenty one also, and but I love the twenty five. It's it's just or older. It's just amazing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Mellow coating, mm. the oiliness and the texture of it. I love. Oh. Mm. Nice. Yeah, but it has a bit of a. A kick to it as well. How many ABVs? It's forty six. Forty six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's it's not just age, but you have a bit of a spicy note to it, a bit of a fruity note to it. But a more the, the the fresh fruity note is it's still a little bit there. It's just becoming yeah. a nuance, and all the dried fruits, ripe fruits, red fruits, they're overtaking here. I love it. Yeah, I guess that's where you've seen that graph about the mm-hmm. how the character develops over time mm. of the whiskey with you know obviously the distillery influence starts very high the wood influence starts very low mm. and they kind of they do that and intersect at a certain stage and then go up so the 25 year old is definitely more wood driven mm. than anything else yeah. whereas some of the younger expressions that we had earlier on have much more of that kind of fruit um at oh, the no. forefront now second sip finish it even got a little bit of a chocolatey dark chocolatey mm. note yeah. to it I love that. Mm. I think I'll take that glass with me. <laughs> <laughs> One for the travels. <laughs> yes. Nice. <laughs> mm. Oh, that is good. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. So, yeah, great work around here. And mm. thank you very much for the interview. Thank you for sharing all your knowledge. And yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming across. Yeah, it was it was great to uh, great to chat and you know show you around the place and everything. It's always yeah, it was, good. Was a lovely time. We had nice weather and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was great. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. And if you've uh, found this video interesting and you have friends who might be interested in this video, then please feel free to share this video with your friends. And if you happen to live in uh, the Netherlands, Germany, or Austria, you can buy this on whiskey.com or whiskey.de. Yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.